24 million Americans have had diabetes. Choke up a grande white mocha labeled diabetes, here I come. But millions of others. A promising new report on America's battle against diabetes. I forgot. My... It's okay. So, uh, tell us uh, where you're from. And, okay. Uh, How long I've had diabetes. Yeah. Got it. My name is Perry Silverheart. I'm from West Hartford, Connecticut, and I've had diabetes for 19 years. I would just elevate the whole thing rather than. <laughs> 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 um, my name is Jesse Levine. What else did I supposed to say? My name is Matt Swain. I've had diabetes for uh, just over 11 years. I was diagnosed on my 15th birthday. The night before, I just remember thinking, like, can't eat cake ever again. Like, when I hear Australian accents outside of Australia, I think we sound rough as guts. As the cyclists arrive in New York City, they meet the team for the very first time. Australia, the UK, New Zealand, Canada, and the United States are all represented on this team of 20 riders. And we're all wearing um, Dexcom monitors, and so like someone's in the room will beep, and everyone like panics and looks at their at their meter to see if it's them. We've all been communicating for well several months now, and so it was almost like we were family before we even arrived. My name is Cassidy Robinson. I am originally from Southern California. Everything is very fresh in my mind because I was only diagnosed 19 months ago. And uh, at the time, one of the doctors in India said that I should forget playing sports uh, for the rest of my life. I've had type 1 diabetes since 1988, uh, when I was about five years old. My name is Megan Banks. I'm from Georgia, and I've had type 1 diabetes since 2005. During the orientation, Walt lets the team know the dangers of letting your guard down while cycling in groups, a danger that is all too familiar. Cycling cross-country is not the safest uh, thing to do. Um, there are lots of things that can happen unexpectedly and add to that type one. On my last cross-country bike ride, I was actually in uh, a riding group that day where one of our riders was hit by a car and she was actually killed. Uh, so I, w I was, you know, right there next to her, uh, saw the whole thing play out. Um, there wasn't a whole lot my writing group could do for her. Um, we tried as best we could, um, but we, we lost her. And we're, we're finding that a lot of people actually thought that this ride is something that could never happen. People in the type one space in particular uh, really felt like a ride like this of, of type ones riding across the country wasn't possible. For somebody to say that I can't play sports was very, very, very hard. I mean, I, I probably cried for 48 hours when I came back from that doctor visit. What would you say to that doctor who told you you can't play sports right now? Uh, meet me in San Francisco. I honestly don't know if I can actually do it. Uh, there's definitely a part of me that thinks 
I, day by day, yep, you can get on a bike and you can ride. Um, actually riding across the country is incredibly intimidating. I've been really quite emotional since I arrived. Like I got off the aeroplane and just kind of cried. I think it's like a mixture of just Overtiredness. I haven't really slept at all and just like scared. She contacted Beyond Type 1 first and asked, uh, I'm a minor, I want to do this. Um, I think she said, she said, but my mom's a cyclist and if I can get her to come with me, can I do it? The team steps away for a much needed break at Beyond Type 1 co-founder Sam Talbot's restaurant in Brooklyn. You've done extraordinary things. You've trusted us. You've You've gotten on planes and trains and automobiles. You've come here to be a part of this exciting adventure. What they're doing, giving up their time for 10 weeks to hit the road, leaving on Sunday and coming back, uh, what, 10 weeks later. That never even occurred to us that it wasn't possible. So I guess I'm riding for all the type ones out there, all the strangers, all the people I haven't met yet. To physically feel like America under my feet, that was like, that was my goal, that was my intention, it was my every desire, and that changed so quickly. Um, once I started like talking to people about like how diabetes has affected their lives, the power in like continuing to push your legs comes from those people for me. just about to head out to the party and it's really scary and I'm frightened and everyone's so nice and that just makes it seem so silly but um I'm not really like a people person like I like people but I don't really like lots of people all over um so a little bit scared for this but I'm sure it'll be great and I can't wait to go on the bike tomorrow because like that's just going to be such a release just actually getting out on the bike so can't wait for tomorrow Yay. With sponsors, friends, and family together, Beyond Type 1 hosts a party for the team on the last night before the ride. We are so thrilled to have these riders here in New York. They've come from all over the world, and they, they came this week, and they started arriving, and they're here. So this is like, uh, this is kind of a miracle, and uh, that we're all here together, and what, what these people around me are doing. Just woke up, barely slept all night, but today is day one, so hopefully gonna be a good day. Um, we've got a lot to do this morning. Um, I'm a little bit of a nervous wreck. It's day one. Excitement fills the air at Pier 4 in Brooklyn as family and friends gather to send the riders off on their 10-week journey. Without their support, this ride would be near impossible. And let this just be the start of a great adventure for all of you. And have fun, be safe. We're going to follow you on your daily blogs and your photos and your GoPros, and we're super excited. Having my family um, give me words of, of how proud they are of me, it's a lot to handle. Um, but I appreciate every moment and every word that they give me. It's kind of getting tough to like get to know them because I know what could happen. Now I'm just trying to make sure that they get as much out of these first few days as they can. The start of this cross-country ride is marked with a tire dipping ceremony. Each rider places their back tire in the Atlantic Ocean and begins an unthinkable trek that will not be completed until their front tire dips in the Pacific Ocean, nearly 4,200 miles away. You know what, if I had to come up with, with one word, it's, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable that I'm here with this, this group of people, and it's unbelievable that we're about to go on this, this really this journey of a lifetime. I think that's what we need to change, is like perception and views of 
of what type 1 diabetes is and, and what it actually looks like. My legs are screaming at me, let's go, I'm ready, I'm pumped up, and I have the energy right now, and I'm, I just want to get rolling. I've had a tough year already, so if I can make it through these 10 weeks, I will be like a much stronger person. It's been already an incredibly powerful experience to be around people who, who are living the same thing that I'm living. I've been thinking about this ride, wanting it to happen for since 2012, like after I got off, off of my first bike ride. Knowing that my mom's with me the entire trip is actually like a huge comfort to me. My challenge is type one. I'm writing for those people to show them like you can. Like you, you can do it if you really want to. We're really doing this for the whole community with people living with type one diabetes, raising awareness for it and giving people some sort of inspiration that they can live beyond. To get off the island of Manhattan, we have to ride a ferry. And getting 20 people with 20 bikes on a ferry is gonna be another big project. So even though we're only riding 30 miles, it's probably gonna be a pretty crazy day logistically.